my past and how I wish that I could forget some of the things in my past. As, a, as an eighth grader, I sang with an internationally acclaimed boys' choir named Sora Antoro. And it was during that singing, during that eighth grade experience, we were all excited because the choir had been chosen to go to the Vatican to sing for the Pope. And during that year, as I was entering into adulthood, as the first soprano, Sometimes, 
There's no exception to the rule. Listen, baby, it may be factual, may be cruel. I ain't everybody plays the fool. Falling in love is such an easy thing to do, and there's no guarantee that the one you love is gonna love you. From Harriet. I later found out that Harriet was now hanging out with Ralph, and it was over. The romance was done. I wish I could forget those stories, and I wish that there were other things that have happened in my life, and I'm sure have happened in your life, that you wish that you could forget. And here, here's Isaiah say, telling us, don't remember the former things. Stop worrying about Harriet, and stop worrying about the play, and stop worrying about Donna, and stop worrying about the things that have happened in your lives. Stop worrying about the former things, and consider what's coming. He says, in, in the beginning of the verse, he says, um, behold, I'm about to do a new thing. And then he asks the question, will you even notice it? Anybody who comes into this church doesn't notice that we have a new ramp, and that we have a new access, and that we have a new bathroom. If they're doing that, they're doing it blindly. Every time that you come into this church and you see people, there's something new about each and every one of us. And if you walk past it and walk past them and don't notice it, something is right or wrong with you. Every time that you come into this church and you look into the eyes of individuals, you're going to see some joys and you're going to see some sadness. And if you don't see the sadness in Robert Woodward's life, you're missing it. Something is wrong. Are you missing out on things? Are you not recognizing that God is doing new things even if there's sad things in our lives? <coughs> Some of the things that you as a church are doing are worth noting. There are problems that have erupted in the past that you probably wish you could forget. There are people who have come here and that who have challenged the relationships within the congregation, have hurt some people, and you may be glad that they're gone, but you haven't forgotten that they were here. Some of the things that are going on, you have met um, the challenges of trying to do ministry. And you've evolved in ways that have caused you to say, you know what, it would probably be really nice to draw people into the church. Let's do steam then. And with all the pain and challenges that it involved to put that on, when you did the, the uh, what was the name of the, the, um, the pig, uh, the, what was it? Boar's head. The boar's head. The boar's head presentation. The pig's head presentation. <laughs> The efforts that went into that of rehearsing and preparing and preparing the, the outfits that were needed and all the stuff that went into it, it took pain and challenge. And as you did it, you said, people who we can announce this to the community, people will come. And yes, they did. And some have stayed and some didn't. Every church has a history that includes difficulties and failures and conflicts. In West Philadelphia, where I grew up, there's a history of issues with a few churches. <laughs> I laugh because as I think about it. On the corner of 53rd and Chestnut Streets, there's a church called White Rock Baptist Church. On the corner of 55th and Arch Street, there's a church called Greater White Rock. Baptist Church. You can figure out what happened there. <laughs> There's a church called Greater Second Baptist Church, which is around the corner from Second Baptist Church. There's a church called Harmony Baptist Church in East Texas. And a half mile down the road, there's a Harmony Baptist Church number two. And then, of course, there's First Church of Winstead, a 
congregational church. And a mile and a half away is second congregational church. There's a story behind that. And some of you who may know the stories kind of wish you could forget the stories. Isaiah wants you to come and move on from whatever issues we may be having, whatever issues maybe we may be in trouble with. We gotta forget some of those things. They're extra baggage that is weighing you down, weighing this church down. The baggage that gets in the way of your future. Your baggage blinds you and causes you to miss seeing the good stuff that the Lord has planned for you. God says, I am about to do a new thing. Well, now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? The Lord wants you to anticipate his promises. The Lord wants you to be attentive and observant. He wants you to miss, not to miss the good stuff he's got planned for you. He doesn't want us to become so concerned about past missteps, mistakes, and missed opportunities, and messed up relationships that we, we hesitate at attempting greater stuff in the future. Staying stuck in the past can keep us from the new thing God wants us to do. If Israel had stayed stuck in their discouragement and self-loathing over the sins that sent them into Babylonian captivity, they would never have seen the new thing that would create their, their redemption and their rescue from Babylon. They're stuck on the past that can impede your hopes and dreams for the future. A century ago, again in Philadelphia, there was a Sunday school in a small church Grace Baptist Church. And the church was a very small church. And one day, a little girl came to Sunday school. And Barbara, you'll appreciate this. She comes to Sunday school, but the problem was it was overcrowded. A children's Sunday school, there was no room for them to even for a child to sit on the floor if she wanted to. Well, that day, that little girl began saving her pennies. And two years later, 